you know, I don't know where it starts, Mike. I mean, as far as the positions of importance, right? If you were to break it down for the, the Buffalo Bills and you just looked at it and you said, what's the, the number one position they got to address? Or let's take – what's the top three oh. positions? Let's address those first and well, then we can rank them. But, how, right. you know, wh where would you start if you're <laughs> Buffalo? When you've got a franchise quarterback and you're not getting the most out of his talent because you only have one receiver who's getting it done, that's the most obvious. They got to bring in receivers. And we talk every year about how there are so many great receivers in the draft. It's becoming like the running back position. They need to be scouting the hell out of the receivers and they need to be trying to do like the Steelers do. And the Steelers, even with great receivers last year, what'd they do? They drafted like two or three receivers in 2022. Now they traded Chase Claypool during the season, but that's what the Bills need to be doing, coming up with ways to create this next wave of great receivers within the organization. And, and look, I said it kind of jokingly. You didn't react to it when I said, is Stephon Diggs threatened by the potential emergence of Gabe Davis? But I can't help but wonder. And you get a complicated package in Stephon Diggs, a guy we love. But I could see him kind of giving that little side eye that he does if they start loading up with receivers, hey, I'm him. We don't need these other guys. Well, Stefan, we do need those other guys because, number one, it's keeping you from being him. And, number two, I don't know how much longer you're going to be him. we got to be thinking about having more guys that can do what you do. It can't just be you plus a collection of guys who aren't you. We need to find some other guys who are you, and you're just going to have to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, I, I would agree with that. I hope he – you know, realizes that as well. I do. I mean, we know he's a guy that wants to win. We know that too. So uh, hopefully, he and the ball. He wants to win, and he sure. wants the ball. Sure. I'm, I'm. I'm. I love the guy. He wants. It's not just he wants to win. He wants to win, and he wants the ball. Well, yeah, all receivers do. Because that, that, he thinks if fine. I have the ball, we'll win. Sure. Sure. And that's fine. And and you know, I think to the point you're making, where he, he got another weapon or another receiver that scared defenses. I don't think it's going to affect his catches at all. I don't. We see plenty of teams with two, three really good receivers, and they got the ball still spread around in a way that everybody's happy and really probably would make more explosive plays, maybe doesn't have as many catches, but has just as many yards and more highlight plays. That's what will happen, right? Diggs is awesome. He can do a little bit of everything. But even to that point, he's not Jamar Chase, right? Jamar Chase is at a point where they go, wait, he's one-on-one, -on -one, we throw to him. And – it's a completion or like we saw in the game, the defender just holds him and goes, oh, gosh, he's about to run by me. I have to hold him, right? I mean, he's, he's an unstoppable force. He's become like Tyree Kill or Justin Jefferson. Stephon Diggs is not quite that. He's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But he's not like, oh, it's man-to-man. -man. We're just we're going deep to Diggs. He's going to run right by him. You know, so that's where I, I do think another explosive element would help him out, the rest of the offense out. And I, I agree with you. I think, you know, wide receiver, the, the positions I come to more than anything are wide receiver, corner, and D line, right? There's, there's Cincinnati the other day. They're not worried about the run. They're just going, oh, our front four will stop the run. No problem. We can have all these guys back in coverage and give Josh Allen problems. And then, you know, flip side of that is there's Buffalo going, oh, wait, it's backup O linemen, but damn, they can still run on us. And we got to put linebackers up in the A gaps and crowd the line of scrimmage because Joe Mixon's running for 10 yards a carry, you know, and they're doing whatever they want. And, and so those are some of the, the other two areas, Mike, that, that I kind of look at with them that I think need some, some improvement. They got to do something about running back. Okay. I, and, and I don't want to – it's too easy and it's fantasy. It feels like it's fantasy football focused when you say receiver, running back, tight end. But you know, when you have Josh Allen, receiver and running back are clearly the top two for me because they need a guy like a Joe Mixon. They need a guy who can bang it between the tackles. They need to settle on one guy and let him become the guy, the guy who will wear you down as the game goes on. I know there's been a trend over the past 15 or 20 years to go toward two or three running backs – and, and that keeps you from ever having to pay any one of them. And you've got a guy healthy every yeah. week. Maybe there's something to be said for having number one, number two. And number one is a guy on whom your running game rests. And you use him. And you keep using him. And you don't get infatuated with what Josh Allen can do. 
You use the running back to balance out the passing game, to keep the defense honest, to get them on their heels, to set up play action, to set up those big Josh Allen throws. Yeah. They just don't have it. Now, maybe James Cook year two can become maybe that. Can, right. But we they need to evaluate that and ask themselves. Yeah, right. Right. Because, because, hey, hey, Josh Jacobs is available in free agency. Right. And I've already seen some people suggesting maybe the Bills should go get him. And on one level, it sounds a little too simple. At another level, it sounds a little too simple. It sounds very simple. It sounds very enticing. Saquon Barkley, Josh Jacobs, bring in a guy and make him the centerpiece of your running game and commit to balancing out your offense. Yeah. So if you run it effectively, then when you surgically unleash Josh Allen, oh boy, there's seven and there's seven right. and there's seven. And you don't have to worry about being down by 17 points Again, in the AFC Championship. Right. Again, the four teams that are left all have that. Oh, divisional round. Well, yeah, but you're saying it. The four teams that are left have that. Oh, Joe Mixon. Okay, boom. Big game. Divisional win. Oh, up the middle, Joe Mixon. Boom, boom. But we're worried about that. Oh, we got to stop Joe. Oh, shit. Jamar Chase is wide open. Right. You You know, you're exactly right. You know, you look at the Chiefs. What do they do this year? We've all talked about it all year. It's made them a different team. Isaiah Pacheco between the tackles. Holy crap. Oh, wait, Mahomes gets hurt. Not a big deal. Look, they got another avenue to, you know, pound you up the middle, make plays that way, help out Chad Henney, right? The 49ers and the Eagles, we know that's what they do. McCaffrey, you know, Eagles do it a little differently with the Miles Sanders, Jalen Hurts combination. But to your point again, you know, there they have that element, right? And then they have other guys on the outside. Debo, Ayu, Kittle, whoa, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Oh, my gosh. You know, you know. then the guys in Kansas City. And then, of course, Cincinnati. So, uh, th again, there, I mean, I, I think it's when you really start to talk it out, it's glaring that, you know, when we start to compare them to the other teams we're talking about here, and you go, yeah, wait, that those guys aren't the same as the guys you just mentioned. And, uh, they certainly don't have that, Mike. You're right. Remember when Christian McCaffrey first was believed to be available? Yeah. Bills Remember were in who that you combo. Said should yeah. make a move for him? Yeah, right. And yeah. and I I just I feel like how do I put this without pissing people off any more than we already have? I feel like when those opportunities arise, the Bills realize five minutes too late they should have done it. That that they get caught up in their fears. And, hey, it was a calculated risk by the 49ers, a two, a three, a four, and a five, to absorb that contract for a guy who's got a recent injury history that's the nature of the position. It's not the player. It's yeah. the position. Right. The position gets guys injured. And if you're Brandon Bean and you're thinking this through, you're thinking, man, that's a lot to give up by way of picks and cash for a guy who may sprain his ankle the first game he plays with us, and he's never the same. So we'll go Christian McCaffrey light. We'll go Naheem Hines and then never use him. Now, I keep coming back to that disconnect. Naheem Hines was their, was their junior version of Christian McCaffrey. And but for the two touchdown returns on kickoffs in Week 18, I'd look at that trade and say, what, why, why did you even bother? What was the point here? Why did you even bring him onto your team? You didn't use him. You didn't use him the way we thought. At least the Colts. I mean, the Colts used him more, and it felt like they weren't using him enough. Now he's gone basically AWOL in the Bills' offense. So, so again, I, I just feel like these, these windows open, and some teams know when to jump through, and some teams know when not to do it, and other teams are standing there wondering what we should do while someone else does. And I feel like the Bills are that team that's standing around wondering what we should do while someone else makes that big move that makes a big difference. Last year, Vaughn Miller and OBJ, Rams win the Super Bowl. This year, Christian McCaffrey, 49ers very well may win the Super Bowl. That, that's another thing that I think is more institutional with the Bills, that they need to fix, that the next time opportunity knocks, they better answer because somebody else is going to. Yeah, sure. Eagles, A.J. Brown, right? I mean, you know, you, you, you can hit on that. That was a certainly – I know that was the off season. It wasn't during the season, but it was a big move to, to kind of put them over the top to give them that formula where we go, man, it kind of seems indefensible at times as far as what they do. Um, so, yeah, I think we hit on a lot of good things. Again – I'm I'm a big fan of what they're doing in Buffalo. I am. I, I you know that. 
I'm, I've always been Sean McDermott fan. I like what they do on the defensive side of the ball. You know, of course, I love Josh Allen, and I like a lot of the things on their offense. But there has to be some change there, I think, to your point. It's got to be a little bit more. There's got to be – oh, so we got to be worried about some guy that can run up the middle. There is no worry there. they got to add that other weapon in the passing game. You know, And, and they're, they're not far off. They're not far off. But it's not an easy solution, I think, is the biggest thing. It's not easy to find those four or five guys that are all going to make sense money-wise and difference-making-wise and put it all together to put out a product that I think we're talking about. We'll see what they can do. They're a pretty smart group. They've done something pretty damn good up there in Buffalo. But, yeah, their eyes are on the Super Bowl, and they're, and they're falling short in that department. Well, they've turned around a team that was mediocre at best for 20 years. Right. But that's the problem. When you – when you constantly tease and entice your fans to think you're finally delivering on that thing they have wanted for so long. And that's one of the big common threads between the Buffalo and Minnesota fan bases. You can either, as a fan, you can circle the wagons, you can sit back, you can say, we have full faith in the powers that be and we're just along for the ride, or you can... You can start asking some tough questions about what we're doing because the years go by quickly. You got one season at a time. Before you know it, five, seven, ten seasons have gone by. What do you have to show for it? Are you Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, or are you Phillip Rivers, Aaron Rodgers? What do you ultimately have to show for it when it's all said and done? And I'm already seeing the Phillip Rivers comparisons to Josh Allen just by way of career ultimate outcome. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.